um, or you shouldn't. Um, so uh, let me ask you a question because the, you caught my attention um, because of, of COVID and, and the tie-in here to, to the work that you do. And so can you tell us um, a little bit about this case that caught my attention? And we'll go from there. Sure. You know, we represent the family of Michael Haywood. We represent his family because Michael died on February 2nd, 2021, after a bout with COVID. Michael was an equipment parts supervisor for the County of Riverside, 15 years, an exemplary employee who had pre-existing conditions, hypertension. He used an inhaler at work. He was a twice over cancer survivor. And his wife, who was a social worker, she has an auto autoimmune conditions, which he was very concerned about her. He was actually more concerned about what could happen to his wife than himself. And so he, at, at a point in time in December of 2020, when things were getting worse and people were getting positive with COVID in the workplace again, he requested the ability to work remotely, which he had shown that he could do because they were a couple times during the pandemic in which he was allowed to work from home. So he was fully set up to work from home. There hadn't been any problems. And he knew that he would have to come in about once every two weeks. And he asked for a staggered schedule then so that he could come in and not be working in the vicinity of other unmasked people because he said and would tell his wife, nobody's wearing masks. They're, you know, Even though we were required to wear masks in, in the office at that point under California law, people weren't following that. And so in December of 2020, December 17th, 2020, he caught COVID. And by December 25th on Christmas Day, he was hospitalized. And as I said, he had a long, somewhat long battle, a couple months battle in the hospital with, with COVID and, and, and succumbed to it on, on February 2nd. So traditionally, when people are looking at these cases and early on in the pandemic, I had some client potential clients come to me and if someone gets injured or sick at work it's usually a, a workers compensation case and it goes through workers compensation because under the labor code if you get hurt at work it's a workers comp case you can't sue the employer for negligence and there's a work there's limitations on what you can recover at workers compensation but in this particular case, the reason why we feel confident that we will be successful for the Haywood family is because Michael Haywood had a disability and he communicated, and there's also laws that protect associational disabilities, and he communicated his concern about his wife, who also had a disability that made them each vulnerable to COVID and the worst of those effects that for them, they felt this would be a matter of life and death. They, they fit into that category. This is not gonna be just like a cold. This could really harm them. And when he asked for those accommodations and communicated it's because of his medical condition, December, 2020, he was denied by his supervisors. They said no, and they forced him into work. A coworker was, got COVID They've actually admitted that through contact tracing that he caught COVID at work. So that's a big hurdle to overcome because, of course, you know, it's hard sometimes for people to know exactly how they got COVID because it's so prevalent, um, especially right now. But it has been in, in, in different circumstances since March of 2020 or February of 2020. And so we have that aspect of it done. And then under California law, if he's requesting reasonable accommodations and the employer, the County of Riverside says, no, we're not going to give you those accommodations. And as a result of their refusal to provide those accommodations, he gets sick. He caught COVID at work. He's working from home. He's not going to catch COVID, right? He's working in an office where people are wearing masks and COVID is rampant throughout the County at this point. He catches it at work. Their failure to provide reasonable accommodations means that we could have a cause of action under the Fair Employment and Housing Act, California's Fair Employment and Housing Act, and also a wrongful death cause of action on behalf of both the wife of Michael Haywood. Michael Haywood has four children, mm -hmm. 11 grandchildren. He was 61 years old at the time of his death. He loved 
those grandchildren, spent time with them. The, the pictures, the videos, they're so touching. He's just really described as such of a the salt of the earth type of guy, um, you know, doing things with his kids, his grandkids. He was, you know, the frustrating part about this, the heartbreaking thing for the family. And, 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 and there's one other aspect to this case. Elizabeth Haywood caught COVID too. And I don't know in, in, in representing her what's worse because she has long haul COVID. She is in this simultaneously hell for her of being completely heartbroken over losing her husband and then having brain fog and panic attacks and difficulty breathing because of her contracting COVID from him. So it's, it's really just, it, it's an extremely sad situation when you look at a couple things. One, we were just a couple months away from the vaccine. I mean, you know, so he, Michael Haywood would have had the ability, given his disability and his age, to get the, co the, the COVID vaccine in February of 2020 and to eventually have protections. Vaccine probably would have saved his life. Um, and, and, and he was a few years away from retirement. And he had some great plans for retirement, uh, buying a camper, he and his wife traveling all over the country, seeing their kids. I mean, you, you, you know, and, and she, Elizabeth's so heartbroken because he will never get to realize that dream. All those years of working hard and you build to something to have the, all that time to spend with your family. And then it just gets taken away from you un unfairly. Now, you, you mentioned um, 